presentation on slope stability of uh, shallow pyroclastic soil uh, covers. My work was uh, mainly focused in uh, south of Italy, close to Naples, very known for the, their pizza. Uh, because in the previous years have occurred uh, several landslides that are quite destructive, very uh, fast uh, in, 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 that, in, the, in this area. And these landslides occur in shallow pyroclastic soil covers, which have uh, a slope angles of between 35 to 37, um, of 45 uh, uh, degrees. And their uh, soil friction angle is actually uh, lower and then sometimes than the, 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 the slope angle. So their stability is uh, uh, due to uh, apparent cohesion. And when there is a rainfall in the winter, the slope tends to decrease, uh, the uh, suction tends to decrease. And when there is a very intense rainfall, the suction drops and we can have the triggering of a landslide. Uh, of course, uh, the measures to stabilize these slopes can be quite invasive, like this one in uh, Sarno. And uh, their landslides are very dispersed in, in, uh, in an area. So because we are trying also to reduce uh, the carbon footprint of civil engineering and geotechnical engineering, we thought maybe vegetation is actually a good uh, solution. It has been used, uh, it's investigated uh, from mechanical reinforcement and also uh, the hydraulic reinforcement along the year because it uptakes water and uh, increases uh, the suction. Be yes, so um, the plants have two main effects on, um, on the hydraulics of soil and on the mechanical uh, behavior of soil because they uptake water from uh, the soil through transpiration. They create, but they also create, create preferential flow channels along the root channels or decayed roots. They change the soil structure to the formation of aggregates that result from the interaction between the roots, uh, fungi, bacteria, and uh, the soil. And they also provide some anchoring uh, along the slip surface. They can also do that. So I focused my, my study in a test site in Monte Faito. It has a nice view. Um, it's actually here, close to previous uh, uh, occurred landslides. Uh, it's in a slope facing north, so it means the volcano, uh, Mount Vesuvius. A very famous one, and it's at, uh, uh, it was at 850 meters of altitude. Uh, the stratigraphy of this site is characterized by main, uh, three main layers uh, over a fractured limestone be bedrock. Here are the, um, the, the boreholes that were uh, performed at the site. We have a first layer of pyroclastic soil, then a pumices, which is a gravel, and then uh, an uh, older layer below that is um, much, it's older and finer, is a, a silt, it's a sandy silt. Um, yes, so this is the grand size distribution of each the layer. So we have A1 and A2, which co correspond to the uppermost uh, layers. We have the B layer, which is our pumices, and we have C1 and C2, which are the oldest layers here in the bottom that are finer. Uh, we can also observe that uh, the soil is very porous and very, uh, very, uh, very lightweight. And this is the stratigraphy of the slope, the, of the site. It's uh, on average, it has a slope angle of 26 degrees. And this is uh, the a picture of the, of the slope uh, in, the, in the winter, quite sad. Um, this vegetation at the site is characterized by mostly castania sativa, which is a chestnut trees for the production of fruits. And the understory is composed of ferns, near here. And the, the, this ground, this uh, vegetation actually changes a lot along the year. During the, the winter, there is no uh, vegetation, no ground cover, which is not the greatest because then that's when you have the landslides. And then in the summer, you have uh, a lot of vegetation, a lot of ground cover, uh, and uh, that's where the, the plants grow and uh, there's more uptake of water. Yes, and you see here, November, winter, and then it starts to grow again in the April. Okay. So I monitored the site. 
the groundwater regime of these test sites. I installed a meteorological station nearby uh, and I perform weekly measurements of suction using tensiometers and um, 24 tensiometers and uh, uh, water content uh, measuring um, uh, measured with the TDR probes uh, at different depths. So these are the installation depths of these, the equipment along uh, the actually 12 uh, verticals. And uh, okay, let's try not to be too overwhelmed here. <laughs> uh, I'm explaining what's here. So in this side, I present suction measurements. In this side, the, I present water content measurements. As you can expect, the, when you have increase of suction, you have decrease of water content, so they are somewhat related. And uh, the measurements of water content, they are much more um, steady and uh, because they don't, the tensiometers cavitate sometimes. And uh, I present also the rainfall here in the top. And uh, here, these are upper soil layers. This is the pumices in terms of water content. This is the uh, lowest soil layer. And there are several things we can observe here. So first of all, we have a seasonal trend. We have low suctions in the winter from uh, so February, March, April, June. In June, the suction starts to increase in ev everywhere. It reaches their peak around July, August, and then the rainfalls start in uh, September, and the suction do drops, decreases. And here you can see, for example, water content uh, uh, increases, actually. Um, yeah, in the stock and water content decreases, there is a, a wet, a dry, pe a dry period increases again because the trees are still in leaf in this time, uh, during this period. There is another rainfall, uh, the uh, water content increases, the suction decreases, and it stays steady during the, the winter. So vegetation can only contribute actually f through, for the water uptake, the transpiration, when the plants are in leaves or whether they are green. So during the winter, they actually cannot help whatsoever in terms of water uptake. Another thing we can see is a delay in the response. So in upper soil layers, we have an increase of the suction earlier than in the bottom layers. And for another thing that we also observe is that uh, extreme rainfall events actually uh, have a sudden uh, response in the uppermost uh, soil layers. And uh, we can also observe another thing here, is that the rainy season of 2016, 2017 was of 825 millimeters, but 2017, 2018, it was 1,554 millimeters. And we see that suction was higher in the first year in comparison to the winter of the next year. So in, in, in general, it's basically to say that there's a seasonal trend along the year. The response is much quicker in the upper soil layers and vegetation actually doesn't help during the, the rest of the year if they are not in leaf, they are not green. Anyway, so what is then the role of uh, the roots in the hydraulic properties of the soil? I quantified the roots distribution in the soil means I picked up roots from boreholes. It sounds, it is as bad as it sounds. And uh, I quantified the distribution with depth. So I collected images, I scanned the, Im the, the roots, and I did an image analysis in which I identified root tips because they are associated to water uptake in uh, woody species. I identified the root length, um, the amount of root length because they should be uh, also related to the hydraulic response of the soil through the preferential flow. And I quantified also the root biomass and root volume. And you can see that most of the roots actually exist in the first meter of soil, you can see here. And then in pumices, they don't tend to grow. And they have a small increase here in the, in the bottom, uh, in, the, the, sh in the, um, the finest uh, soil layer that we have in our profile. I then try to relate the position of the trees in my site to the special distribution of the, of the roots and also to the hydraulic response of the soil. 
through uh, what I call a competition index. So increasing competition index means that I have more trees and less space, and bigger trees also. And what I observed was that I had an increase uh, with more roots and uh, more trees and less space trees, I had uh, an increase of uh, biomass and I had a decrease in the minimum water content that I observed along the year, which I uh, concluded that comes from water uptake, because if you have more roots, you have more water uptake, you have less uh, lower suction, which is actually a positive uh, consequence other than the fact that this happens in the summer. Um, and then I also uh, perform hydraulic conductivity tests in saturated, uh, uh, saturated hydraulic conductivity tests in, um, in, bore in um, a course that I brought to the lab. And uh, I compare different soil layers also in terms, not only in terms of saturated permeability, but in terms of porosity um, and, the, the, and the, the finer fr fraction of the soil that I find in my, soil, in my samples, which is silt, and the dry biomass of my roots. The soil that has the higher biomass has also the highest permeability. This is logarithmic of the saturated uh, permeability and negative, so higher permeability, higher roots, but it can also be associated to a higher uh, porosity. So what I concluded is the porosity, biomass, and the saturated uh, permeability uh, go hand in hand, and they are all related and cannot be uh, distinguished and uh, separated. The effect of uh, vegetation can, uh, is a bit contradictory also on the, the state of the art because they report that they have an inc a decrease of porosity with the presence of roots. But on the other hand, they also, because the, the roots clog the pores. But on the other hand, I see that uh, with the growth and because this is a, uh, this is a mature uh, roots, uh, mature site of uh, the trees in the site, I believe that there is a loosen up of the soil and a change in structure that leads to these uh, results. So I know, faster hydraulic conductivity is actually not that good for slope stability. So in the end, let's try to compensate this with mechanical reinforcement. So out of all the ways that a uh, uh, plant can interact with, so uh, with the soil, let's see what has actually the, the highest weight, if it's the hydraulic or the mechanical reinforcement by the roots. And uh, in natural soil, how I call it, we have, uh, for the shear strength uh, resistance, we have the contribution of roots, suction, and the shear strength of the soil. From the roots, I used uh, a WU model and the RBM, FBM model, which uh, assumes that all the roots uh, break uh, in tension, they behave like cables, and I calculated, uh, they, so they, they distort and they, they break in the shear plane, and then you calculate the root mechanical reinforcement, the mechanical reinforcement of the soil by the roots with depth. We see that we almost don't have any mechanical reinforcement in the, the pumice layers. Most of it comes in the shallowest depths, and then it increases again in the in the uh, the bottom layer. I monitored the suction uh, so I can uh, get that information from the site, and I perform direct shear tests on uh, my soil samples obtaining uh, the, the shear, uh, the friction angle of the soil. Then uh, with a very simple model, uh, a finite, um, a, a limit equilibrium model on an infinite slope, uh, which, consi oops, which considers the shear strength of soil suction and roots with these input parameters in assuming uh, these different uh, fa potential failure surfaces, I calculated the safety factor of the slope. Okay, and here we can uh, see the relative contribution. So in blue, we have the one that comes from suction, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the brown or orange is the one that comes from the mechanical reinforcement of the roots and the gray one from the shear strength of the soil. We see that, uh, well, this is just for the, the, uh, the lower most uh, layer, but here you have all of them. And we observe that, for example, in the winter, uh, we don't have, uh, uh, the, we cannot count on the shear strength that comes from uh, apparent cohesion because there is no suction. So, but we can always count on the mechanical reinforcement of the, of the soil. 
And we concluded that the actually the, the lowest uh, safety factor would be 1.7, and it would be the case with roots, and 1.5 in the case without roots along this year. So it increases uh, the safety factor by 0.2. Uh, the fact that we are considering the mechanical reinforcement and of, the, the, and the, of the soil by the roots. And um, it also changes the, the, the most likely failure surface. And uh, I, then I just try to change the slope angle to what extent can the roots mechanically reinforce the soil. And uh, I concluded that um, you can, uh, without roots, you can uh, go up to 36 degrees, and with roots, you can go up to 42 degrees, which is a nice uh, improvement. And so uh, that is it. I uh, just message to take home. Uh, the groundwater regime actually changes seasonally. You cannot really count on it. Uh, has a measure to, that you can trust to slope, uh, st stabilize a slope. The, the roots actually tend to increase the hydraulic conductivity of the soil, which for slope stability is not the greatest. I'm sorry, I'm not crushing dreams. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, but uh, the mechanical reinforcement of uh, the, the soil by the roots uh, will actually have a positive effect that can hopefully compensate the negative.